Okay. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I, I visited the wrong stage. Um, they changed something in the program, and um, yeah, I was not aware that I am here. Um, yeah, so this um, talk is about, um, initially it was about intent-based holistic data center management, and I had this talk in, in Frankfurt at the Cloud Expo, and then um, I renamed it a little bit, and it's more at the moment about intent-based infrastructure management with a focus on data centers with the um, um, target to, to manage full data centers in the future. Um, but we are not yet there at the moment. Um, so my name is uh, Christian Behrendt. I'm working with um, OpenStack for over 10 years. So I started with the um, um, second release with a production deployment for SAP. And um, then I founded the OSISM company um, five years ago, and um, so we are OpenStack experts here from uh, Germany. And at the moment, we are um, heavily focused on the Sovereign Cloud Stack project here in, in Europe to, to help um, Europe to um, gain a um, yeah, Sovereign Cloud Stack based on OpenStack and Kubernetes and, and so on. And the OSISM is um, a fundamental part of this stack for the reference implementation. Um, so what's the problem we, we try to solve? So normally, um, you start with a um, new OpenStack environment on a green field, and you build um, something um, where you think it's a good idea to build it this way. And so you normally um, do not ask a lot of other people. You just um, do something what makes sense for the current requirement at the current time. Um, but the problem is that the requirements will change over the time. And you have an uh, infrastructure. Um, so this is the, the infrastructure, this um, Lego castle. And this is your starting point. And then you have changes in the requirements. You have a new hardware type. You have new GPUs, or you have DPUs, or a new switch vendor, or um, a new data center. or um, So something changes. And one of the changes could be in scale up of the environment, new hardware is coming in, or in scale down, you have to um, remove some hardware, and the environment will change. Um, and there is um, something called an, an flexibility corridor. So um, it's not a big deal to change um, um, smaller pieces of an environment. So you can scale it, or you can add a new service, or you can remove a service. Um, but you have a problem when you want to um, um, transform the whole environment to something totally different. So you want to rebuild the, the castle. Um, you have your Lego bricks, and you want to rebuild them. You want to transform them after maybe um, um, three years, because your base infrastructure layer changed from OpenStack to, to something else. And this is the problem, that you then have to do this transformation of your existing infrastructure to another time frame with another flexibility corridor, and then you have to change it another uh, thing. And to be able to, to enable this, you have to master the scale, the flexibility, and the transformation of the underlying um, base infrastructure. And so what is required to be able um, um, to do this? Uh, you need a data center, yeah, so we are focusing on, on, on cloud service providers. So this is the data center from um, Hetzner in, in Falkenstein. And um, you, you need um, physical resources. So in the end, we, we always consume compute resources, storage resources, network resources. This never changed in, in the past. It was only um, yeah, a little bit different. But in the end, we always have those three types of resources. And then um, a good decade um, passed. We, we invented OpenStack, and um, we established a an, an, an good infrastructure um, as a service layer to um, abstract the underlying physical resources with virtualization. Then we have um, a Kubernetes today to um, abstract the infrastructure as a service layer with a Kubernetes as a service layer to be able to consume Kubernetes. We have um, something as a service, um, as an addition to the Kubernetes as a service, for example, database as a service, or uh, messaging as a service or S3 storage as a service. And on top of this, we can run our um, cloud native workload today. And this is required um, to also be able to transform the underlying physical um, resources. So in, in order to enable the high dynamics on the, on the workload, um, you have to um, build a long-term um, reliable infrastructure with a high quality. Um, that does not change every then and then. So what we want to, to archive is um, 
If you want to have an, an, an railway as an infrastructure layer where you can um, build your cloud native workload on top of it and where you can um, change um, small pieces or re can rebuild everything, but so that you do not have to rethink everything every day. And we, we started to implement this um, uh, five years ago with, um, so with our own cloud. So the company has an other name before and we wanted to build a an, an public cloud and we saw this is super easy. And um, yeah, it's not so easy. And then we, we invented this um, deployment framework and it's based on, 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 on Colla and Colla Ansible and Ceph Ansible and some other tools. And we, we, we started to use this tool for our own um, environment with an unique, uh, not one-time engineering, but very unique. And uh, yeah, this is, this is good. It, it worked, um, but it's pretty bad for the, uh, uh, yeah, for other customers. So then some other customers came and asked us to build on-premise something like our cloud and hmm, yeah, it was a nightmare in the end. And, and so one of the, um, what you have to do is you have to standardize the, the components. They have to be changeable and scalable and repeatable and understandable. This is really important and you have to be able to integrate them with, with layers atop of them and, and on, on the button. And when you have such an approach, then you can um, 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 simply change the, the underlying components and can build um, something um, totally different from the same uh, uh, bricks. And yeah, to, to do this, we, we started with um, our physical resources and with, with bricks, so our um, um, components and with some um, plan what to do with the, with the bricks. And then we decided to just use um, the, the Ironic um, service as one part to, to manage the um, physical bare metal resources, to make the firmware management, to make burn-in tests and cleanups and so on. And um, we wrote something in, in Python so that we are able to um, manage uh, network resources so that we can um, deploy configurations on any switch type. We can make the switch configuration, um, so we simply log in via SSH and we generate the whole configuration based on a state in the, in the net box. And then we can control this via Ansible and we can deploy then on the compute or storage resources um, for example, an OpenStack cluster or a Ceph cluster or a VMware cluster or a Proxmox cluster, you can also mix them so that you can you have one bare metal control plane for all physical resources in the data center, and then you can decide what you want to build um, with those uh, physical resources. And this is the, the OSISM framework. So this um, means open source infrastructure and service manager. So uh, a short term is OSISM. And this is um, simply consuming a, a netbox as a single point of truth. And in this netbox, we have the current state that is um, deployed on the physical environment. So the um, uh, connections to the switches and the, uh, what is deployed on a system and, and so on and so on, the current uh, power state. Um, is it already deployed or not? Is it um, in a good state or in a bad state? Do we have to apply another firmware and so on? So the whole live state lives in the netbox. But the netbox is in the end just a representation of what we have on the physical layer and we consume it as an, an API layer. So this is not um, the point, so the single source of truth. So we, we, we make a difference there. We have a single point of truth, so an API layer for the few on the physical layer and we have a source of truth which is based on, on Git. So we have everything in, in a Git repository. We have a representation of the possible states of the physical resources. And then we say, ah, we want to have this state. This is applied by the OSISM framework. And then the current state is stored in the net box. And then we deploy everything on, on the bottom layer. And this way we can um, establish a, a GitOps workflow. So we can just push our descriptions or our uh, configurations to the Git. And, and then the uh, mechanism will um, take care of the um, new state. And this is the, uh, what we are meaning with intent-based um, infrastructure management. So we have our resources and we just say this system should be in compute node in an open stack cluster and then um, the system will take care of this and will transfer the physical resource to a compute node and will add it to the um, open stack cluster for example. And this way, so this is now um, um, our environment and to be able to be safe in the future you have to transform your underlying infrastructure resources to something else. So today we deploy our infrastructure with OpenStack 
In the future, we will maybe deploy it with um, Kubernetes, and then we will maybe deploy it with an, an serverless framework. But um, we thought it's a good idea to not think every single day about what could be the technology in the next day. We just want to be able to have our um, uh, data center infrastructure resources, and we want to have a framework for the next decades that can just transform our underlying infrastructures to something else. And we do not want to reinvent the wheel every single day. So we do not want to, to um, yeah, think about how to resolve now the firmware management, for example, in Kubernetes. We can resolve it with an OpenStack layer. This works with Ironic. This works pretty good. So we think this is not um, necessary to change the, the next 10 years or so. And to do this, we um, have our GitOps workflow. So when we want to do a transformation, we say in the configuration repository that a system should change. And we commit it to the OSISM framework. And the OSISM framework will move the new required state in the netbox and will then say to Ironic, ah, you have to do something. And then the Python Ansible part will take care of it. So it will remove the existing system from a compute cluster, will deploy something different on it. Maybe it will clean up the, the system. And when it's finished, it talks back to the netbox and says, ah, here is the new state. Uh, we are finished now. And then it's always checking if the current state is, is reached. And this way, you can simply transform your data center resources in something else. Um, yeah. How does it in uh, too much in detail? So this is the, the current framework. Um, so we have on, on, on the bottom um, a lot of repositories for the uh, current state, the inventory, the configuration repository. And we have some external services like the Git service where we um, store our uh, state and so on. And we have um, external registries for the um, container images or for the packages we want to deploy on the um, resources. Then we have an, an OpenStack, what is just an ironic bare metal control plane, which can communicate with um, the out-of-band um, management interfaces. And then we can deploy on this, um, at the moment, compute nodes for OpenStack or storage nodes um, um, for Ceph. Or we can deploy resource nodes, of course, for customers, where we can then add um, an, an Proxmox or an VMware or something else. And we can also control the network resources. So when we say a um, uh, compute node should be in this cluster, then the network configuration for the switch is generated on the state of the system, and we can just push out the, um, the network configuration. One of the things we, we want to um, archive is that we have a central change management. So we decided to not use um, Kubernetes as the base layer for OpenStack because we think um, the infrastructure layer should be rock solid. So we do not want to have something there what makes um, um, dynamic changes. So we only want when we have a change, we, we make a pull request in our Git repository, we approve it, we merge it, and then the framework will do something. And, but we do not want to have self-healing or, or stuff like this. This can work when you have a an, bigger an team or so, but we are focusing on, um, um, for example, uh, supercomputers or for uh, uh, some critical infrastructure where we think it's better when the infrastructure is in a state where we know this is the current state and exactly this is the state. And f to be able to use, um, make this possible, we have an GitOps workflow based on then Ansible and, and, and container images, based on Colla Ansible and, and Ceph Ansible, and, and we just deploy everything, and then everything is fine, and we do not touch it. And when it does not work, we have to, to heal it on, on ourselves. So we have a monitoring around, and we have um, operators. But we think this is um, yeah, better for, for the infrastructure layer. And then we have a central secret management to be able to rotate the secrets in the infrastructure. And uh, we have an, an, an teleport. So it's what's boundary before. And now we have um, teleport to access um, the deployed systems for the, the actors, so for the operators in, in, in this case. And of course, we expose some interfaces and APIs and data exchanges. So data exchange is, for example, um, Prometheus for the metrics, or the exposed APIs is then for um, for the Ansible or for the OSIS um, itself. Exposed interfaces is the, the RapidMQ management interface or um, the internal horizon dashboard or, or some other internal admin interfaces. So for the, for the actor that they can access um, the, the, uh, the infrastructure environment. Yeah, of course, who not? 
And yeah, so this is a way to get in contact with us. And yeah, that's it. If you have questions. Um, So the netbox is um, an internal component um, which we um, use uh, to represent the, the internal state. So um, we do not plan to, to um, have too much details in the netbox because most of our customers already have a data center management tool or an asset management tool and so on and so on. So it should just be the source of uh, the single point of truth for, for the internal state of, of the machine. And so we have integrated um, the, the Python layer, and that's it. And we generate, for example, the Ansible inventory in, in something static and store it in a in Git repository. And so we do not use um, some dynamic plugins that connect to the netbox. Everything is static and stored in a Git repository in the end, so that you can have a review of it, you can audit it, and so on. No, everything is static. So we do a full description um, what we expect to have in the netbox. So the netbox is in the end just um, a view on the state that is stored in the single point of truth. It's just a tool. Um, so we do not want to um, make changes via the netbox. Um, so when you want to change an IP address, for example, for a system, you make this change in the source of truth in the, in the Git repository, and then we will change the IP in the netbox based on the state in the repository. And the netbox is just there to have an API for um, our YAML files. Yes. So we fetch the, um, the, the current state from the netbox and we generate then an, an Ansible inventory and then we use this Ansible inventory to identify changes. Yes. But only the, 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 the current states. Yeah, exactly. So that so it, it depends if it is Ansible or Python to access these switches. So, for example, we implemented it for MicroTik devices, and um, there it's not so easy because it's not an enterprise switch, and the, they have not a diff feature. So you you have to calculate the diff yourself and have to apply the comments yourself on the switch. And for example, there we use Python to access the switch, but for other switches we can um, use the um, Ansible modules for it and can just use an Ansible playbook that generated and this. Configuration that is generated is also stored in a Git repository so that you can add there and change management that somebody from the, um, from the network operation team can have a look first on the network. And we plan to integrate there, for example, Batfish to validate the network configuration before we um, deploy it to the, uh, to the network switches so that we can pre-validate them and yeah, that they really work and is not broken. Okay, so thank you for your time and enjoy the evening. Thank you.